What's up guys, in this video we're going to start building our first client side neural network application using TensorFlow.js, so let's get to it. Now that we have Express set up to host a web app for us, let's start building one. The first app we'll build is going to be similar in nature to the Predict app we built in the Flask series with Keras. Recall, this was the app we built in that previous series. We had a fine-tuned VGG16 model running in the backend as a web service, and as a user, we would select an image of a cat or dog, submit the image to the model, and receive a prediction. Now, the idea of the app we'll develop with TensorFlow.js will be similar, but let's discuss the differences. Can you see the source code that's generating the responses? Um, yeah, we can, and we will, but first know that our model will be running entirely in the browser. Our app will therefore consist only of a front-end application developed with HTML and JavaScript. So here's what the new app will do. The general layout will be similar to the one we just went over where a user will select an image, submit it to the model, and get a prediction. We won't be restricted to choosing only cat and dog images though, because we won't be using fine-tuned models this time. Instead, we'll be using original pre-trained models that were trained on ImageNet, so we'll have a much wider variety of images we can choose from. Once we submit our selected image to the model, the app will give us back the top five predictions for that image from the ImageNet classes. So which model will we be using? Well, remember how we discussed in a previous video that models best suited for running in the browser are smaller models? And how TensorFlow recommends using models that are 30 megabytes in size or less? Well, we're first going to go against this recommendation and use VGG16 as our model, which is over 500 megabytes in size. Nice priorities. We'll see how that works out for us, but you can imagine that it may be problematic. No worries though, we'll have MobileNet to the rescue, coming in at only about 16 megabytes. So we'll get to see how these two models compare to each other performance-wise in the browser. It'll be interesting. All right, let's get set up. From within the static directory we created last time, we need to create a few new resources. We need to create a file called predictwithtfjs.html, which will be our web app. Then we also need to create a file called predictjs, which will hold all the JavaScript logic for our app. Then we need a directory to hold our TensorFlow.js models. So we have this one, which we're calling tfjs models. Navigating inside, we have two subdirectories one for MobileNet and one for VGG16, since these are the two models we'll be using. Each of these directories will contain the model.json and the corresponding weight files for each model. Navigating inside of VGG16, we can see that. To get these files here, I simply went through the conversion process in Python of loading VGG16 and MobileNet with Keras, and then converting the models with the TensorFlow.js converter we previously discussed. So follow that earlier video to get this same output to place in your model directories. All right, navigating back to the static directory, the last resource is this ImageNet class JS file. This is simply a file that contains all the ImageNet classes, which we'll be making use of later. I downloaded this from TensorFlow's GitHub, so I've included the link to it in the video description. Let's open it up and take a look at the structure. So we just have this JavaScript object called ImageNet classes that contains the key value pairs of the ImageNet classes with associated IDs. All right, now let's open the predict with tfjs HTML file and jump into the code. We're starting off in the head by specifying the title of our web page and importing the styling from this CSS file. For all the styling on the page, we'll be using Bootstrap, which is an open source library for developing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that uses design templates to format elements on the page. Bootstrap is really powerful, but we'll simply be using it just to make our app look a little nicer. Now, Bootstrap uses a grid layout where you can think of the web page having containers that could be interpreted as grids, and then UI elements on the page are organized into the rows and the columns that make up those grids. By setting the elements class attributes, that's how Bootstrap knows what type of styling to apply to them. So given this, that's how we're organizing our UI elements. Embedded within the body, we're putting all the UI elements within this main tag. You can see that our first div is what's considered to be a container on the page, and then within the container we have three rows, 
and each row has columns. The columns are where our actual UI elements reside. Our UI elements are the image selector, the predict button, the prediction list, and the selected image. We'll explore this grid layout interactively in just a moment, but first let's finish checking out the remainder of the HTML. All that we have left to do is import the required libraries and resources that our app needs. First, we import jQuery. Then we import TensorFlow.js with this line. So this single line is all it takes to get TensorFlow.js into our app. Then we import the ImageNet class.js file we checked out earlier. And lastly, we import our predict.js file, which as mentioned earlier, contains all the logic for what our app does when a user supplies an image to it. All right, so that's it for the HTML. Let's check out the page and explore the grid layout. First, we need to start up our Express server, which we learned how to do in the last video. Then in our browser, we'll navigate to the IP address where our Express server is running, port 81, predict with tfjs.html. And here's our page. It's pretty empty right now because we haven't selected an image, but once we write the JavaScript logic to handle what to do when we select an image, then the name of the selected image file will be displayed here, the image will be displayed in the image section, and upon clicking the predict button, the predictions for the image from the model will be displayed in this prediction section. If we open the developer tools by right clicking on the page and then clicking inspect, then from the elements tab, we can explore the grid layout. Let's expand the body, then main, then this first div that acts as the container. And hovering over this div, you can see that the blue on the page is what's considered to be the container or the grid. So now that we've expanded this div, we have access to all the rows. So hovering over the first row, we can see what that maps to in the UI from this blue section. And we can do the same for the second and third rows as well. Then if we expand the rows, we have access to the columns that house the individual UI elements. So hovering over this first column in the first row, we can see that the image selector is here. And the predict button is within the second column in the first row. And the same idea applies for the remaining elements on the page as well. So hopefully that sheds a bit of light on the grid layout that Bootstrap is making use of. All right, in the next video, we'll explore all of the JavaScript that handles the predictions and actually makes use of TensorFlow.js. Let me know in the comments if you've got all of your HTML set up and you're ready to jump into the JavaScript, and I'll see you in the next video.